Okay, I got it. Got it. All right. All right, so maybe we'll get started. It's 9 2, and I want to really try and change it. Actually, first, can everyone mute your screen? So, can you mute your screens, everybody? Awesome. I have like adult ADD, so if I hear background noise, I can't. Oh. Concentrate. <laughs> So I want to try and keep this really short tonight, A, because my Kleenex box is close and I'm like kind of still foggy from being sick. Thank you so much, everybody, for understanding last week that I had to uh, postpone this call, but there was no way I was doing it last week. And uh, I'm glad that everybody's here tonight and I am ready to get started. So I'm going to, I guess I should introduce myself. Not everybody knows me. My name is Michelle File, and I've been a coach for about two and a half years. I met Amy online, so we did not know each other before I started coaching. And um, I'd never been in a challenge group, so I was one of those people that had used Beachbody products prior and uh, saw this random post online that she posted, and I said, I'm in, and I was in, and here I am. So, um, it's just kind of goes to show what can really happen on social media. I mean, Amy's one of my closest friends now and we, you know, together we're working and building these crazy, amazing teams and you guys are now close friends and it's really amazing what can happen with this opportunity. And I hope you guys all feel the same way. I assume you do if you're here on nine, at nine o'clock on a Monday night listening to me ramble. So I'm just going to make the assumption that everyone that is on this call is you know, ready to bring it and wants this to be their business and wants this to be a life-changing experience. So when I'm talking, that's the type of person I'm talking to. I'm not talking to someone that's kind of doing this mediocre. I'm really talking to someone that wants to do it. So I'm giving you my tips and things that have worked for myself and my team. And um, hopefully they will work for you guys too. So I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully. Can you see those, Amy? Maybe can someone just pop on and say, yeah? Okay, awesome. Okay, so tonight we're just... I can, I can see it. Okay, perfect. So tonight we are going to talk about defining your resolution season. And I'm sure when you guys saw that this morning, you thought, oh, okay, she's going to talk about the new year, you know, that what we're going to do in the new year, what we're going to do in 2017. And we're actually going to talk about the fourth quarter. And that's what we're in right now. And that's what I actually think of my resolution season. We're going to talk about organization, how I organize my day, my week, my months for myself and my team, and how I'm going to make sure I hit my goals for 2016, but more importantly, set my goals for 2017 and really be there ready to do it January 1st. Not that there's going to be any lead up time in January that I'm having to work really hard. I'm going to be ready to crush it in the resolution season. And we're going to talk about excuses and we're going to talk about sacrifices. We're going to get real. Um, some of you might not like me at the end of the call, but I'm going to tell you kind of how it is tonight and we'll, we'll get through the tough stuff. So first, let's talk about this fourth quarter. The fourth quarter is where we are right now, from September until the end of the year. But personally, I think of the fourth quarter as my resolution season because it's when I prepare for the actual season, January, February, and March. Typically, for coaches, that is going to be our busiest season. That's where we are going to have the people coming out of the woodwork that want to get fit. They had too much junk food over Christmas, they've drank too much wine, and they're ready. They're making their resolutions, and they're ready to do something about it. But what I can tell you is they don't have time to find you. They don't have time to look for someone to help them. So you need to have already done all that groundwork, and that's what this season is about. That's what September, October, November, and December is about. It is about planting seeds. And I drilled this into myself and my team last year. And I think they would all say, 
you know, they got sick of hearing Michelle talk about planting seeds. I would post pictures of a garden and a flower growing. And, but it's true. If you talk to people and start building relationships now, they might not be ready now. And I know how discouraging that is. Trust me. I get just as many no's as you guys do. And it is irritating. But if they're not ready now, they're going to be ready soon. And most likely, they're going to be ready in January, February, or March. And if you've already built that relationship, they don't need to find you. You're going to be right there because you've built this amazing friendship with them. And they're just going to know to turn to you, that you are that go-to person for them. So if you are thinking about taking a break on this fourth quarter, I I urge you not to. This is not about, you know, sitting back and enjoying Thanksgiving and Christmas is coming and we've got to shop. I know it's busy, but you really need to do some consistent daily activities so you can be ready for that January surge, that January busy time. Because if you're not, they're going to find someone else. They're going to have someone else. There's going to be someone else behind you that's already messaged them. So you really need to be planting the seeds now. This fourth quarter, I promise you, will define your 2017. It will determine if you are successful in 2017 or not. And hopefully, you know, if you... If you message enough people, it's going to make the end of this year really successful for you too. So you're hitting your goals in 2016 and you're ready to take off in 2017 like a firecracker. So the next thing I want to talk about is how will, do I organize my time? And this is kind of funny that I would talk about organization because <laughs> anyone that knows me too well knows that I am not the most organized person in the world. I'm kind of like that frazzled organized. I have papers everywhere. If you can see my off, well, I have never even had an office. I'm still working at kitchen tables randomly all over the place. So, but I do get asked this a lot, how I stay organized and what's my system. Everyone wants to know what program I use and what I've downloaded. And, I, and sometimes I'm really afraid that people get hung up on all these fancy systems. And I'm, I'm not downgrading any of them because if they work for you I think that's awesome but I sometimes think they take you away from what you need to do they take you away from the action steps that you need to be doing you know we often put off the thing that we don't like doing it but that's the thing that's going to give us the biggest return so sometimes I'm afraid people download and again I'm not bashing any system but say we download USANA and we spend two weeks figuring out USANA and we got everybody in there and everybody placed. And then you say to yourself, well, shit, I didn't message anyone for two weeks because I was downloading USANA. You know, sometimes just simple systems are the best systems. Lots of people say to me, I'm not organized, so I'll never be successful. You know, that's not true. You don't have to do sexy, fluffy stuff. It can be very, very basic. Take um, solace in the fact that this business is really simple. There is not any crazy stuff you have to do this. If I can do this, I swear to you, anyone can do this. It just takes consistency and a little bit of patience and just, you know, doing the same things over and over and over again is going to make you successful. If you only had one hour in your day to work on your business, what would the three things be that you need to do before anything else? Everything in this business leads to success club. So what does that mean? What do you need to do to get to success club? You need to connect with new people and you need to be messaging people. You need to be having conversations with people. That's really all you need to do. You need to get the fluff out of the way and just do the basics. So I'm going to share with you my system. As I said, if you have a system that's working, stick with it. Go with it. If you listened to that Teamsy call and thought it was the cat's ass and you spent a week setting up Teamsy, 
Awesome. Amazing. Go for it. Get the work done now. You know, don't get stuck on the details. Get stuck on action. Now it's time to put it into action. Use that system and, and get going. Don't, don't keep trying to perfect it. Just get going. Forget the fluff, basically. So here is how I stay organized. At the beginning of the month, I make a team calendar. And everyone on this call has a team calendar. Either you're part of my team, Team Fitnique, or you're part of True and Amy and Brian do a calendar as well. So we all have the same stuff here. There's a calendar posted on the team page. What I do is I print that off and I will, you know, even write on it after I've posted in my team page. But here's, I know what I need to do. You know, I know when my coaching sneak peeks are happening. This month, I knew when the health bet started. You know, all this stuff is placed for us so we know what's going on. You know, I start with the things that I know for sure, and then I go from there. I always am responsible for one of the team Fitnique True calls. I always do a new coach started right call sometime a month. You know, we always on my team shout out on Saturdays a challenger. I always have a free group. I always have a challenge group. I'm always taking part in Rock the Basics. So that stuff is all there. So then I know how to market my month. I know I need to start advertising for my free group, you know, around the first of the month. And I usually, this was September, Labor Day, so I started my free group on the 12th. Normally I would do it on the first month of every month. Um, so it would have normally been on the 5th it was, if there wasn't a holiday. So I would start talking about a free group the last couple of weeks of the, the month. And then my challenge group, you know, I know that all, when they always start. So I start marketing and doing posts on social media. If everything is laid out, you, you know what to do. You don't have to be fumbling all over the place, wondering what you should do next. And, you know, when should I have a challenge group? If you have this all set out, it's very, very easy to follow. Now, I told you I was simple. <laughs> this is literally my system. As you can see, you know, we were supposed to do the call last week. That was September 12th. This is literally what I do. On the daily tasks, I have a paper and I have done it for a long, long time. And this is what I do every single day. I reach out to five people from my support page. I reach out to five people on my like page. I, um, I can hardly read this, but um, I ask three people about coaching every single day. I follow up with three people. I drink my Shakeology. I do my workout. I listen to read personal development. Can everybody mute your screens, please? Or is yeah, I was just going to ask you to uh, see if you can. Can you mute all of them? Can you? Um, Go to like manage participants and unmute everyone. We're getting some major something going on here. I just don't have the option. Okay. Whew. There we go. Wow. Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay. So this is literally how I stay. Can you still hear me? I hope so. <laughs> how I stay organized. Amy, can you just pop on and tell me that you can still hear me? Yes, you are good. I can hear you. Sorry, it took me a minute. I kept you in suspense. I had to unmute it. Okay, so this is how I stay organized, literally. Like, this is the page that I've had forever. This is what I do every day. I don't do anything more than that. It's very simple. It's the vital behaviors. I post on all my pages. I like to post in my challenge group. I post on my like page. I post in my grad, grad group and I post in my support page. I check in with at least three challengers a day. I send out birthday messages to anyone that it's a birthday. So this is sitting in front of me all the time. I want to have proof here. Here it is. Like it's always with me. So this is not fancy as you can see. However, all of you have <clears throat> access to really fancy, pretty sheets. In every file section, there is a pretty fancy daily to-do list. 
Team Fitnique, you have zillions of them. I've made so many of them because I love making stuff like that. You have your big coach planner. True, I know there's one in, your, uh, in our file section as well. So print that out if you want something a little fancier or just make it up yourself. Those are the things that you need to do every day. So have it right there and literally check them off as you go. My next um, picture I'll show you is the picture to the right. And this is just my notebook. And I have one. I start one every, every um, month, so September. And I, <clears throat> at the beginning of the month, I go and I write out all the dates, Monday, September 12th. And it, I, the night before, I write down names of people that I want to connect with for posts. Those are the posts that I have to do. So sometimes I have extra things that I have to do or I, I'm going to be working the next day. So I just want them there so I remember them. Projects. You know, as you get going in this business, you're going to have more and more to do. That's just the way it is. And I need to write everything down now or I would be just a mess. I wouldn't remember anything. Um, <clears throat> I always keep track of Success Club, what I'm at, and what usually by about mid-month, I would have my team there as well. So if I have a coach that's at Success Club 3, I'm going to reach out to them and I'm going to say, okay you want this you're at three so what can i do to help you to get to the next step and then i also have a little section for personal what did i say there squash my head cold well that didn't happen <laughs> anyway so you know that's my little book i've i have tons of them in my house because i've done that for probably a year and a half and it goes literally everywhere with me and then the next thing i have is a binder full of loose sheet paper and I write down every single person's name that I connect with. So um, this girl I talked to Country Heat about. Um, this, oh, all these people wanted to be a coach. Oh, none of that worked out. Um, you know, uh, every single thing. And I'll put little notes. Okay, so Ruby, 21-day fix follow-up. Sent pricing, just got a job, wondering about cost, sent cost right there. So I'll just write, it takes like literally a minute to write down little things. And now I can go back for months and months and months and see who I've talked to. I never, ever lose track. You need to track your people or the more people you talk to, you're going to lose track. You're never going to be able to remember. So that is as simple as my system is. I don't do anything more. I've never started a spreadsheet. I've I did download Teensy and it made my eyes cross and I've said, forget that. I'm just sticking with what I know. I mean, I'm just keep it simple. It's so important to track your business building activity. Again, don't get lost in the fluff. Write to-do lists in the order that you need to get them done. Did you know that you are 42% more likely to get something done if you write it down? That's just a fact. So if you write it down, it's more than not probably going to get done. Your business building activities are first, always. They need to be first. Even for myself, I love, like I could sit and make slides all day. I'm crafty. I, now my daughter is into Rainbow Loom, or should I say I'm into Rainbow Loom? <laughs> I could have sat here all day making owls and ghosts and pumpkins and cupcakes because I love that stuff. But, you know, I can't. That's, that is not going to get me ahead. Making these slides needs to be the last thing on my day, not the first. The first things I do are talking to new people in private messages, reaching out to new people, making new friends, returning messages. Every single thing I do, I, I say to myself, is this moving my business forward? Is this something that is making useful of my time especially a lot of you are still working you're just new into this business you need to make the most out of the time you have um, for myself i push really really hard the first of the month on my own business i want to get my success club goals down i want to have all of that done by the first you know by the 10th latest 15th and then the second half of my month is for helping my team and helping them get to get to their goals. So many times people, the last week, you know, we're in these push groups and they're still at zero and they're depressed and they're going crazy and they're messaging like 1,500 people a day and then, then they're totally overwhelmed. 
why not start at the beginning of the month? Get that stuff over with. It's so much easier when you can sit back and say, oh my gosh, I'm at Success Club 5. That was my goal. Whatever else happens, happens. And you keep doing the same things every single day. And all of a sudden, you're at Success Club 15. Your commission's bigger. You're helping more people. The chance of you building a team now is higher because you've helped more people. You have more people in your challenge group. It just makes more sense. Now the hard part. Oh, boy. So we're going to talk about excuses and sacrifices. <clears throat> so excuses. There's no lack of resources. There's just a lack of resourcefulness. And I did not make that up, obviously. Some, some guy that you guys all read, he's <laughs> tall and chiseled face. I can't remember his name. I've been trying to remember all day. Anyways, that's his quote, and it's so true. We have so many resources in this business. It's, it's literally crazy. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of um, YouTube, but you don't need me. You don't need Amy. You don't need anybody. And you could be a top 10 coach because everything is out there. Every single thing you need to run this business is out there. You just need to go find it. It's, it's easy. For the first year of my business, all I did was watch YouTube videos. Whatever I could think of, I watched and listened to because it helped me. It moved my business forward. I didn't want to bug Amy and Brian all the time. I did and still do. But, you know, I wanted to figure it out on my own in my own way. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, you want to apply the law of duplication and then be you. You guys have access to the same stuff I do. So you can go and look on all the top 10 coaches pages. You can look at my page, Amy's page, whoever, whoever you look up to. You can see what we're doing. You can see that this kind of stuff we're posting on social media. So take those ideas and make them your own. Don't copy. You know, no one wants to have a copycat because it doesn't sound like you when you copy. But take the idea and make it your own. Put your own picture there and make it your own, have your own vibe to it. I always am really, um, I'm flattered when one of my coaches, I'll read one of their posts and I'll be like, oh yeah, that was kind of like what I posted last week. Like that's, that's flattering to me. I think, okay, so it must have been all right. You know, just do what we do. Like it's easy. It's very simple to just look at what everyone else is doing and put your own spin on it. Be positive and stop blaming your lack of whatever for being the reason for not being successful. It, you know, you guys have, we have everything at our fingertips. We all are, you know, we all have the same opportunities if you stay positive, you're going to have a much better chance of being successful in this business. I hear so many different reasons why people think they can't be a coach or they start as a coach and they tell me they're not successful because of this. For our team, we're still like this little baby team and we're a lot of us live in the same area. So I hear all the time, well, your market is saturated. We could never do that. There's so many of you in that market. Well, I'm here to tell you that my top coaches, my, the diamonds on my team, we all live about five or probably like 10, 15 minutes away from each other. So we've made it work. You know, that, that can't be an excuse. You can't use things like that as an excuse. Don't give yourself an excuse not to start. You know, I'm too busy, the market's saturated, I was never meant to be successful. Kind of got to get out of your own head and uh, figure it out for yourself. If you really want this, you can make it work. Anyone can make it work. Start with what you have and just get the job done. Just do the action steps and learn as you go and, and you will be successful. Sacrifices, and this is the last little part of my little chat, I think. I don't think I have another slide, no. Um, <clears throat> the only two things that stop people from seeing success in this business is excuses and fear of rejection. And that, that's really the bottom line. You know, lots of, I'm still afraid of rejection. I still hate getting no's. I still 
feel like, oh, people think I'm silly, whatever. I still feel that, but I, I zone into my personal development and I get over it and I keep soldiering on because my why is big enough. My why is important enough to me to keep going. Um, sacrifices are something that if you want to be successful in this business, you're going to have to make. I'm not going to cherry coat it for anybody. I've made thousands of sacrifices in the last two and a half years. The bigger your goals, the bigger your sacrifices are going to have to be. So first off, I just want to establish right from the get-go, before I get into this, we're all busy. Every single one of us is busy. It's almost become like this badge of honor to say that you're busy. Everyone at my salon, I will, this is the first question. How are you? Oh, busy. How's it going, Val? Oh my God, I'm so busy. Like, we're all busy. It, it's just the way our life is. But you just have to find, you have to find your pockets of time that you can do this. Not all, you know, I know that no one is Tasmanian deviling it all the time. And that was for Megan. <laughs> we heard that term on a, a call we were both listening to and she dared me to say it on this call. So, but it's the truth. You know, we, as busy as all of us are, you know, we all have pockets of time. And that's what I did in my first year of business. I was still cutting hair every day. I had a three-year-old. I had crazy stuff going on in my life. So I didn't have that beautiful power hour that we all dream about. Like that, that's not real life, honestly. I don't know who does a power hour because if you have it, that's awesome. Um, it doesn't have to be this amazing scheduled you know, perfectly laid out desk with a cup of coffee in your hand and the lighting's just right and you have the fancy paper and you sit down for an hour and your kids aren't yelling at you and your husband's not talking to you. Like, that doesn't happen. You need to find little pockets of time when you're super, super busy to get this done. You just have to figure out how to fit it in. What I did was my, at, at work, in between my clients, I would answer messages. Um, honestly, when Delaney was skating, I would watch her for five minutes and then I would do my posts for five minutes and then I would watch her for five minutes and I would do my posts and then I would get caught not watching her. You know, I, I, you just fit it in sitting, waiting for your kids to get off the school bus or coming out from school on um, your lunch breaks. There's lots of time. Personal development's the easiest thing to fit into your life. You don't have to sit and read a book. You, I listen to personal development when I put my makeup on. I listen to it in the car all the time. If I go for a walk anywhere, my earphones are in. There's lots of places to fit it in. And I just kind of wanted to go through um, the sacrifices that I really have made in the last two and a half years. So you know that if you really want these, if you have set some goals for yourself and you really want to do this, you're going to have to make these sacrifices and maybe you need to reevaluate your goals if you're not willing to do that. And that is okay. This, you know, this isn't for everybody, but <clears throat> this is what I had to do to get to where I am now. And I'm certainly not done. So I'm still making these same sacrifices every single day. I wake up very early and I have for two and a half years. And when I say early, I mean 4.30. And I know that's not for everybody. I'm naturally a morning person. So for me to get up a little bit earlier was easier. The first couple years of my business, I had to. That's when I did my workout. That's when I did my personal development. I had to. There was no other time. And I would do my first two posts, social media posts of the day. I stayed up later. You know, pre-Beach Body, I went to bed at I would tuck myself in at 9.30 and I would, you know, be on my iPad until 10 maybe. <clears throat> and I was lights out because I'm naturally a morning person. But, you know, there was lots of nights that Terry was clamping down my, my computer at midnight and saying, you know, if you're planning on getting up at 4.30, this is crazy. I have walked around for two years with bags under my eyes. It's just the way it is. I have not watched TV, no TV for two and a half years negative, nothing. I couldn't tell you anything that's on TV. I don't listen to music. <laughs> I know 
no current events. Terry actually briefs me. I still work two days in the salon. So I talk to human beings like in real life and he briefs me before I go. If there's like something catastrophic that's happened in the world, because he's like, someone's going to ask you about this, Michelle, and you need to know, like you need to at least look a little bit intelligent. So thankfully I have him because I don't listen to any of that. It's personal development everywhere. It's taken over music. It's taken over the news. I know I say this all the time and I know the girls on my team will probably roll their eyes, but I have not taken a day off ever in two and a half years. And I'm telling you the last two months have been crazy. And I'm not saying this <laughs> for a badge of honor, but I mean, they've been crazy. We've moved twice. My dad had a heart attack. He was in the hospital. I was down and out with this crazy sinus infection but I still did my vitals every day. And I'm not gonna lie, there were days last week that I said, oh, okay, I hate this business because I can't take a day off. Like every other person has a job, they can take a day off and be sick and I can't. I did say that to myself, but then I remembered why I was doing this. I don't read for pleasure. You know, I like a good romance just like everybody, but you know, I don't read that kind of stuff anymore. It's all personal development. Um, <clears throat> my work days, I still do work two days a week as a hairstylist at our salon. And in between every client, I check my phone. You know, I don't sit and chat in the back room anymore. I don't sit and have lunch with the girls. Like it is all about, um, connecting with people during the day in the pockets of time that I have. Free time, date nights, coffee time with friends, they don't happen as much anymore. They just don't. And you know, that's a decision I've made. My free moments are, have been for my business and, and continue to be. I, I really do feel that the more sacrifices I make now in the future, you know, I'm not going to have to. I really believe that. Don't ask about our laundry situation. We often have eggs for supper for 12 nights in a row. Like nothing great is happening here. The only time I make supper is for complete social media purposes. <laughs> if there's something new on our table, it's because I made a video. Um, shopping. I used to love shopping. I used to love going to winners or I think it's TJ Maxx for you guys in, in the US, but I used to love, you know, Delaney would be off with her grandma and I'd spend an hour. I don't do that anymore. I go online if I have to and that's it. Little pleasures like getting my hair done and pedicures and manicures, you know, I don't, they're few and far between. As I said, I figure if I work hard now, you know, my, myself and my family, we're gonna have lots of time to play later. So I need you to ask yourself what kind of success you want. And then you need to backtrack and see what you're willing to do and what you're going to have to give up to get there. And, and you're, you will have to give up some things. You will have to make some sacrifices. What are you going to do right now to solidify your success in 2017? What are you going to do to be that go-to person when the people are ready in January? Because if you aren't that person, you know, someone else is going to be that person for them. I guarantee that if you get yourself together now and put so much effort into this last quarter, not only are you going to be successful this last quarter, but that resolution season, the season where our business is booming, where people need us, where they need our help the most, you are going to be ready and set to go and people are going to search you out because it's not going to be hard. They're already going to know that you're that go-to person. And that is it for me. And I didn't even have to blow my nose. That is amazing. Um, let's see here. There. Okay. I guess, does anybody have any questions? Just unmute yourself if you do. I'm here to answer anything or chat about anything. What up? Michelle, Michelle, can you post that picture of your, um, your workbook um, in the team yeah. page? Yeah, I will. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. 
Can I just say, Michelle, that we are like one and the same person. Like it's a wonder we found each other because I'm sitting here looking at my jumbled around desk and my list and my papers everywhere. And I'm like, oh, I got one here. I got one here. I got my to-do list for tomorrow. I got notebooks next to me. So we are definitely um, on the same wavelength there. I always um, think in your new house, I'm going to have this office. I'm going to be so organized and I won't be. I'll be exactly the same with shit everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. We did. We had a beautiful office. It looked like it was out of Pinterest, and I didn't ever go in there. <laughs> I was sitting at our kitchen counter all the time, or the desk, or at kitchen counter stools. So, but I have to say that your call was kind of awesome because it kind of correlated to my live video today. And I'm not sure if you saw it, but I talked a lot about how you know you're going to sacrifice, and how you know sometimes you might think you don't have time for something, but it's never that you don't have time. It's that it's not a priority. You know, you haven't quite hit that spot where you've made that a priority in your life. So, you know, it's more or less finding the time because you want it. You know, you have to want it before anything. Um, and pushing through, like, the dry spells for you is you were talking about. I talked about in my video that there are winter months. There are those months that are going to be dry and that we're not – we're getting a lot of pushback. We're hearing a lot of no's. And just like Michelle, I hear them constantly. Today, oh, my God, I have so many no's written down. It's crazy. I'm doing the 100 no challenge along with my little push group and – it's, it's a lot of no's, but just like with your fitness, if you push through the winter months with your fitness, you guys, and you are, you know, crushing your goals, you're going to get right back on track and you're going to be like looking amazing in your shorts and your bathing suits come summer. Right. But if you slide off track and you don't do anything, you don't do your workout, you don't drink your Shakeology, you don't do that nutrition, it's going to be hard as heck to get back on track when you know, the sun starts coming out and you want to put back on tank tops and shorts. But, um, you know, just like with your fitness, it's with your business. If you slide off track during these, you know, harder months and it's going to be harder to get back on track, you know, once the new year starts. So, you know, just like Michelle said, connecting and engaging with people right now is going to help you propel in 2017. So I, I do have to, oh, oh, go ahead. I always think it's funny when coaches, you know, I, here I don't have time all the time and, and I get that we're all busy. Like I said, we are all busy, but we expect our challengers to make time for that workout and to make time for meal prep. You know, it's exactly the same in your business. What you're telling your challengers every single day, maybe you need to turn around. And if you have, you know, you're helping them get to their goals it's, it's the same thing for you. These are your goals. The problem is um, a lot of people have never been their own boss. So you come into this business and you've never had to actually self-motivate you know, self yourself. I am very lucky. I've, I've been self-employed um, for a long time. So I've, had to, I've always had to self-motivate myself. It hasn't been a hard transition for me. But I realized that for a lot of people to have this kind of flexibility is very tough. So you really need to, you know, say to yourself, you know what, wow, that this is tough for me. Um, I usually have someone giving me stuff to do. So you need to get a little bit more scheduled with yourself. You need to write this stuff down and pretend it's a boss giving you a sheet of paper, um, whatever you need to do, but you need to set those goals and do them every day. It's, it, it's simple stuff. It's just be consistent. Just like you tell your challengers every day. It's simple. 30 minutes. You can do it. You have time. Well then so do you. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. That's very, very true. And I have to share a little bit of your story, Michelle, because, you know, you're saying how much you sacrifice and it is a lot and I sacrifice the same, you know, maybe I sacrifice a little less now, but it's because I've sacrificed for five years in a row that I'm able to maybe go to lunch with my kids in the middle of the day, or I'm able to go, you know, volunteer at my kid's school. Um, but it's because I sacrifice like, like Michelle, I still don't watch TV. I don't know the current events. Brian does just what Terry does and he tells me what's going on in the world. So I don't sound like a stupid moron. So, um, but, um, I, I really do think that if, if anything, if you're just staying up an hour later, like, oh my gosh, like just an hour later, that's it. You can get so much done if you're focused, you know, just like I talked about on my video today, focus and consistency. If you're doing those things, you're doing like the vital things necessary to build your business in that hour, you could get so much done and you could grow so quickly. Um, so yeah, I sacrificed sleep, but to look where I am today and where Michelle is today, Michelle worked every day before 
you know, she got into this business and the harder she worked and the more sacrifices she made, it allowed her to, you know, leave her job on certain days. She worked every Saturday. She doesn't have to work Saturdays anymore. She's able to spend more time with her daughter on those days. So the sacrifices are worth it yeah. for sure. For sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Any more questions? Hmm? No. That's a big group too. There's like 40 of you guys here. That's awesome. <laughs> no questions? Carrie wants to know if I scared everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, you know, the newer coaches might be like, whoa, this sounds a little scary, you know, wow, you know. But you start simple. You know, we didn't start like going crazy like this. We didn't start sacrificing enormously until we really started to dig into the business, you know. So just one, one little thing at a time. That's really all it takes. And the basics, like Michelle said, it's not brain surgery. It's just the basics, helping people. And That's all we're doing. No one has to make any sacrifices if your goals aren't the same as what mine were. Those were my sacrifices. I'm not asking anyone to make those sacrifices, but I also knew I had a deadline of when I wanted to be five-star and I was. Yes. And I go. don't say that to be like, oh, ooh, I have an amazing... <laughs> I didn't make my team go five star. My amazing girls helped me get to five star. Like it, you, we know how that works. But um, if your goals are big, you have to reverse engineer that. You have to figure out how you're going to get there. And all that means is talking to more people. If you break it down to like the simplest of things, it means finding and talking to more people. Mm -hmm. That's it, really. And it really does come down to your why too. Like every single one of you, like I'm looking at all of you, you all have a different why, you know, so obviously your goals aren't going to be the same, but Michelle's why was she wanted to be home with, with Delaney more and she wanted to spend more time with her family. And my goal was I didn't want to be a nanny anymore. I wanted to be home with my kids. I wanted to get them on and off the bus. And then my goal became, I want to get Brian home more. And I, I know Michelle has been doing the same and Terry's able to do more and see, you know, Delaney more as well. So you know, maybe your goals are similar as ours and maybe they're not, but whatever it is, find your why, write it down and stick to it and give it all that you have to go for that why, no matter what it is, big or small, you know, just backtrack, like Michelle said, step backwards and realize what you have to do to get there. Yeah. So, awesome. All right, guys, any, any questions? All right. Well, Michelle, thank you so much, honestly, because I know you have not been feeling good and I know this was really hard for you to get through. So I appreciate you doing this. I was really going to push it back to Wednesday. I'm like, girl. <laughs> this is good. You guys waited. So thank you so much for indulging, uh, indulging me and listening to me and let's make this quarter awesome. That's all I can say. Agree. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. Okay, good night, bye. everyone. Good night.